Today's message is uh, perseverance. And I want to use for the scriptures Luke 11, 9, and 10. And I'll read uh, Psalms 13, 1 through 6 as well. And Luke reads as follows. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receive it, and he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knock, it shall be opened. As Psalms uh, 13, 1 through, verses 1 through 6 reads as follows. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eye, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Let mine enemy say, lest my, least my enemy say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I trust in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in their salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Uh, these scriptures talks about uh, persevering. And I want to start with the discussion with defining the term perseverance. Uh, taken from my dictionary, it says, Persevering is a continued effort to do or to achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. The action or condition or an instance of perseverance, and it can be steadfast. Perseverance can also mean persistence, implied to res resolve and unyielding, holding on, following a course of action. Perseverance commonly suggests activity maintained in spite of difficulties. It is also said to be looked at as a steadfast and a long-standing endurance combined to win in the end. Um, so we see here that perseverance is never giving up. Perseverance is enduring the race, even in the face of difficulties. I can, what readily comes to my mind is the situation with Job. In spite of all of the troubles and the trials and losing everything and having his body uh, inflicted with sores from head to toe, he never lost faith in God. Even when his wife told him to curse God and die. He told her, you must be foolish, woman. I'm not going to do that. Even when his three friends come to console him and made him feel worse because they were trying to get him to say, well, yeah, I've sinned and I've done this. And, and he just told them, no, I have not sinned. But he held on to a steadfast, his steadfast faith in his God. And his God was is the almighty God who created both heavens and earth. And in the heavens, everything that's in the, in the earth, he created that too. Then he sustains all of his creation. And surely he would not forsake Job. Then he would be going back on his words when he said, I will never leave nor forsake his own. And see, God is not a liar. And there is no failure in him. So then, if he made that promise, it behooved Job and you and I today to hold on to our steadfast faith. 
and stay committed to the course that we have chosen. And for Christians, we have chosen to walk the walk of faith. We, because we live by faith and not by sight. So therefore, and being uh, in God's army, we're going to experience some difficulty, some hard times, and it's going to cause us many times to do like the psalmist said, Lord, how long will you forget me? That's in our human nature uh, when he asked him. He said, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? But see, I rest assured that God is not gone. He is not deaf. And he will never leave us. And his time is not our time. But one thing I can uh, assure you, when he shows up, it is right on time. And he shows up because he comes in a mighty way. And so, yes, in our perseverance, in our faith walk, I'm also reminded of Paul when he said, The race is not given to the swift, but those who have the stamina, and I'm paraphrasing, to endure to the end. See, this Christian journey is not something we're going to complete overnight. And however long we live on this earth, and if we have made the commitment to walk with Christ, uh, it is a journey. And we must have the tenacity, uh, the goodwill, or the commitment to walk on with Christ by faith. Yes, the roads are going to get rough and it's going to get tough. But we must keep in mind that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you to the ends of the world. See, we who are in Christ are chosen by him to be his ambassadors, to be a light in this sin darkened world. And we can't let our light shine if with every trial or tribulation we give up and go run and hide on a rock somewhere or go stick our head in the sand. The tougher the situations get, the brighter we are to let our light shine, the, the taller we must stand. And how do we do that? We stand from our knees through prayer. And see, God, and I've said this many, many times, he dressed us in his body armor because he knew we were going to have a fight on our hands. But we are victorious because Jesus said he's already overcome the world. That's in John 16, 33. In Isaiah 41 and 10, he tells us to fear not because I'm with you. And let me just repeat once again, God is not a liar. There is no failure in him. And you can call him as many times as you like. But he's not deaf, I can assure you that. I don't recall my last conversation with him that he had to have a hearing aid. He heard me the first time. And he certainly answers prayer. I'm a living witness to that. But I can tell you this for sure. If we hold on, And never give up. Don't faint. Yeah, in our humanness, we may become weary. And ask like the song was, How long, Lord, are you going to forget me? How long am I you going to keep behead from me? But best assured, God's time is not our time. But he's an on-time God. And he's an unchangeable God. And yes, in our weariness, we can ask the second question. Lord, how long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Yes, it looks like many times in, we, in this battle that uh, the enemy is winning. 
and we get weary again, like I say. But let me just assure you, the enemy has no win. And Satan always makes himself look big and tell all kinds of lies and, and paint a beautiful picture that, oh, I'm so this and, and I'm so that and, and I got this battle and you might as well to give up. But no, that's not perseverance. That's not persistence. And uh, we must have the resolve to stay steadfast and committed to our fight. We are in a fight for the very soul of our soul and the soul of this nation and this world because sin is running rampant. I mean, it is rampant. And each time I talk to many people, they just know that we are in the last days. And I have to refer to them, Matthew 24, when we are talking about the calamity that we are going to encounter before the last days get here. But I say this, if we're not in the last days, we are living in those uh, calamity times when right has become wrong and wrong has become right. But let me just assure you once again, right is always going to be right because God said it's right and his word is right. His word is true and there is no failure in his word and whatever he says in his word is certainly going to come to pass. So don't believe all Satan lies when he's talking to you about, oh, it's over. Give up. I won this battle. I told God he wasn't going to win. No, that's another one of Satan's sanctified lies. Don't believe him. We must continue to persevere. We have to endure some things. And I'm reminded, and I can't give you the scripture, the book, but he said, uh, given all that Christ suffered for us, Shouldn't we not be able to suffer? I think it was Peter was talking to his uh, uh, audience at that time. And the question is very valid today. Christ suffered immensely for us on that cross. So if we are children, his children, he gave us his righteousness and he took on our unrighteousness. And since we are being the righteous of Christ, yeah, we are going to suffer because the world does not like Christ. Neither does it like what he stands for. Kid you not. And, uh, the, we, and we are saying we are followers of Christ. Yeah, we're going to be tested. And we're going to be thoroughly tested. But we must have the resolve stand fast and I used to hear my mother always say when you stand on the truth of God's word there gonna be many times you're gonna have to stand alone but just stand there anyway and you know what I have lived long enough to see all of that come into play because with society as it is today yeah it's gonna seem appear that those of us who believe and who stand for right is standing alone. But let me just assure you, we are not alone. And I have to take you back to God's word when he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And then over in Matthew, when he's telling us to go teach and preach, uh, that he will be with us until the end of the world. So what does that assures me yes I may feel like I'm alone in this battle but I'm not when God's spirit feels like he's the farthest away he's the closest to me and then I can take comfort in the fact of yeah he's here with me he's standing and I'm able to withstand all of Satan's fiery darts because he's right there with me you know, God is not a God that he will send a soldier to battle unprepared. And that speaks to that body arm I so readily refers to. So, uh, 
Yes, we have to be willing to persevere because we are victorious. We are more than conquerors in Christ. And as this scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We must believe that. We are not some defeated uh, warrior. We are a victorious warrior because of Christ. And I'm going to take you back to John 16, 33 once again. Fear not, because I have overcome the world. And what he said, you don't have a thing to fear. You just need to go on and fight. You just need to stand and tell the word. You just need to tell a sin riddled world that Jesus Christ died for the sins of, you, of the world. And if you accept him as your personal savior, he died for yours too. And then you have your own personal testimony. See, yeah, he died for mine. Yeah, it might seem bleak sometimes. The world might uh, get rough. I may become weary. Because let me tell you something, Satan is powerful, but he's not all powerful. Don't forget that. Because when Jesus rose that resurrection morning, he said, I got up with all power, not a little bit, not half, not a third, not three quarters, but all, all, all means all. So that means he can do anything. And Satan is still running around trying to uh, defeat God's army of followers. And see, uh, another thing I want to point out, our steadfast commitment to uh, completing this journey is a testimony to our resolve. And our propensity or our determination, put that's a better choice of word, to win this battle. Because we just have to see it through. The battle is already won. See? Uh, and we don't have to ask the question. Least consider and hear me, Lord, because he hears you. And in the other part, it said, Oh God, my God, like listen in my eyes, least I sleep the sleep of death. No, we don't have to do that. And no, we do have to worry about it. I'm in uh, Psalm 13 and verse 4. And it said, at least my, my enemy will say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me will rejoice. No, they won't have that opportunity. We have to be persistent. God has said, I'll be with you. So now we have to keep uh, going, fighting the good fight of faith never giving up and we can take assurances as as uh, this uh, psalmist was uh, was speaking of if we don't persist our enemy will prevail over us and he will be rejoicing saying ha 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 i won that battle no you have not and uh and we can say like the psalmist in the uh, fifth verse. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Yes, and that uh, also speaks to our persistence and walking the faith walk, fighting the good fight, keeping the faith, and standing on the promises of God's word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we have concerns and cares and anxiety because of the world that we live in, God told us, First Peter 5 and 7, just cast them, give them all to me. I got it. You here wrestling with it, just give it to me. You know, I, I got all of this. And we must be willing to do that. Cast all our cares on him. We don't worry God when we take our problems to him. He wants us to bring our problems to him. Because his shoulders is big enough. And his arms is long enough to box with Satan. You know, he's more powerful than Satan. And one thing I can say, 
when you constantly walk and talk with God in prayer, you'll always have the comfort in knowing that the God that we serve is an awesome, all-powerful God. He know all, he see all, and he can do all. So we don't have to have a defeatist attitude. We can rejoice and sing the song that is, victory is mine. And you, yes, you can tell Satan, you had to get behind me today, brother, because I got this. But victory is mine. It's me and my Jesus is going to win this battle. And you might as well go sit down somewhere. And I'm not going to send you to another human being to destroy their life. I just want you to go sit down somewhere. Yeah, we can sing that song proudly. You know the song that James, the late James Brown used to sing, I'm black and I'm proud? Yeah, well, I'm a Christian and I'm proud. I'm a child of God and I'm proud. And I'm going to hold up the stain, blood-stained banner because we're going to keep fighting this fight for my Lord. And I'm saying mine because we will need to, each one of us that hear this message needs to internalize it and say, my God, and my Savior, my King, my Warrior. Mm. Yes. And we can do, and we, we persist and endure and fight the faith, the fight of faith. We will come to the end and we can sing this song. Because good God will have dealt with us bountifully. Because he is our deliverer. And he have, will have a delivered all of us through whatever trouble and trials we have. And I'm going to take it back to Job. You know, Job lost everything. And even his health. Whenever when God decided to restore him, he gave him back more than he had lost. See, that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we worship. That's the God who uh, has gave us his promises. And every promise God has made, he has kept it. And every promise that it will be kept, the ones that it has not already been kept, when he told you he will see you through, believe him. And I, I'm, this, this phrase come to mind, trust and never doubt. See? Yes, God is an awesome God. So uh, I want to leave you with these encouraging words. We have not because we ask not. We need strong faith. If you ask God for it, he'll give it to you. And whatever you're seeking, he'll tell you what it looks. We have an awesome God. And Lord, I pray that whoever listens to this message will be reassured that the Christian walk that we are on, we are fighting the fight of faith. We will be successful if we never give up. We endure to the end. No, this is a race of endurance. And Father, we just thank you because of who you are, what you has done, is doing, and will continue to do in the lives of your people. And Father, we thank you. And we are praying it in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen and amen.